We're starting a new series today on prayer. Prayer is important. Jesus prayed. Mark 135 says, Now in the morning, having risen a long while before daylight, he went out and departed to a solitary place, and there he prayed. Even in the Garden of Gethsemane, just before he was arrested and given his false trial and crucifixion, Jesus prayed, saying, Father, if it's your will, take this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. And we note that after that prayer, an angel from heaven appeared, strengthening him. And then Jesus taught his disciples to pray, as we read in Luke chapter 11, verses 1 to 2. He was praying, and the disciples said to him, Lord, Teach us to pray. Paul prayed, Acts 16.25, but at midnight Paul and Silas were praying, singing hymns to God. Right when it was the darkest, worst time in their lives, they prayed. Peter prayed. In Acts 9.40, Peter put them all out, knelt down and prayed. And turning to the body, he said, Tabitha, arise. And she opened her eyes, and when she saw Peter, she sat up. Peter prayed just before doing that great miracle. The New Testament saints prayed. Listen to this scripture, Acts chapter 4, verse 31. And when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaken. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and they spoke the word of God with boldness. Old Testament saints prayed. James 5, 17. Elijah was a man with a nature like ours. And he prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the land for three years and six months. Amazing results for prayer. Prayer is important. Prayer is a privilege. So we need to know how to enjoy it, how to operate in prayer, and how to see results from our prayer. Prayer is also the antidote to worry. Philippians 4, 6-7 says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Prayer is fellowship with God. God loves talking to his children just the same as we do. He loves us. He likes spending time with us. I was thinking as we are instructed to cast all of our cares on him and don't worry about anything, someone could say, I'm going to have to spend a lot of time in prayer to pray through all of my worries. And God says, that's good. I really enjoy spending time with you. So come on, let's pray together. Let's have some time together. You can see this with Jesus when he rose up early in the morning to just invest time fellowshipping with his father and praying. Amen. Importantly, our prayer is God's invitation to access the earth. So when we pray, we're inviting God into man's domain. And the basis of this is the covenant that he set up and our faith in that covenant and our faith in God. When our faith is good, it's been proven, tested true, comes out like gold through a furnace, then faith is needed to bring God in into the situations where he can help us and others. Amen. Let's pray. Father, as we look at the word of God today, especially in this area of prayer, we're asking that you would move in our lives and help us all grow in our prayer relationship with you and grow in our ability to receive answers because prayer is important and we certainly need your help today. So that's why we're asking for your spirit of wisdom and revelation as we go through this in Jesus' name. Amen. So the first one we look at today is praying for what you really desire. Now, this is very, very important. We're not just talking about what's a good idea. We're talking about what is it at the heart of who you are that you really desire. What could you put aside other things for? What gets you up in the morning? What motivates you throughout the day? What's the focus of your life? Where are you headed? What is it that you really desire? And this comes exactly out of our previous series on the law of confession and comes back again to what Jesus taught us in Mark chapter 11. I'm going to read verses 22 to 24. So Jesus answered and said to them, Have 
faith in God or have the God kind of faith or let God's faith be in you. For assuredly, now remember, assuredly means it's an assurance. Faith is an assurance. For assuredly, I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things which he says will come to pass, he will have whatever he says. The next verse goes like this. Therefore, now the therefore is a connecting word which means what follows in verse 24 is preceded by verse 23 and verse 23 being the reason why verse 24 works. So the prayer promise is predicated upon the law of confession. How does this law work again? What have we learned over the last series, the last few weeks, is that if you fill your heart to overflowing with God's word, then out of the abundance or the overflow of your heart, your mouth will speak. And the mouth, as we've learned, can control everything, according to James chapter 3. It can control and put direction on your flesh. It can steer a ship. It can set things alight. And it can be like a fountain of living water, or it can be like a spring of polluted water, depending on what's in there. So we have to think of our heart as a big bag full of words. We keep putting words in, the Word of God, I hope, in. We put the Word of God, the Word of God, the Word of God. Then when it overflows, we speak the Word of God. And because it's initiated by God, it's very easy for us to believe that it can come to pass because He watches over His Word to perform it. If we're just speaking our own words, then we have to have faith in our ability to bring it to pass. And it's so easy for the devil to make us doubt. Because Jesus said, if you believe that what you say is coming to pass and don't doubt in your heart, then you can have what you say. It's important that we speak something that we're not going to later on doubt. That's why once we get God's word in and speak his word, it's a lot more probable that we can do it without doubting because we can believe that God can do what he says. I mean, after all, he created the sun, he created the world, he created the universe, he split the Red Sea, he calmed storms, he multiplied bread and fish. There are so many stories for us in the Bible to remind us that with God, nothing is impossible. And then in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20, he said, God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, far above all that we could ever ask or think, according to the power that's at work in us. So this big bag of words, if we fill it up with God's word, not the word of the world, not the devil's ideas, but God's word, then they overflow as a living word. And this is what God watches over to perform by the same token. Or based upon that is this prayer promise. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray. Now, the King James has that as what things soever you desire when you pray. It's probably a better way to look at this, because even though the Greek word means both to request and to desire, if we think of it as our desire, because it's got to fit with this verse that talks about our heart that is overflowing with words that come to pass. And if it's our desires, remember the Bible said, God gives you the desires of your heart. So if your heart is filled with desires that come from God, the desires that he created you to desire, he made you who you are with a plan in mind. He wants you to be an expression for him on earth to bring to pass part of his creativity, but also to desire part of his desire. So when you're full of God and full of his word, you're a worshiper in spirit and in truth, 
walking in the Spirit, living by faith, got your eyes on Jesus. And as he said, if you abide in me, my words abide in you, you can ask what you desire and it will be done for you. When you're at that place, then the desires of your heart are the ones God gives you. And then these are the things that motivate us, that drive us on. These are the things from the depth of our innermost being. These are the things that fill up the bag of our heart with words. And when we're in prayer and we're really seeking God with abandon, we're full worshippers, fully yielded to him. We confess that Jesus is Lord then these desires will come out. That's what Jesus is talking about. Therefore, I say to you, well, you know, therefore, because of all of this to do with the law of confession, whatever thing you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. These two verses go together, the law of confession and the prayer promise of Mark eleven twenty four. 24. Amen. So I want to ask you today, what is it that you really want? I remember this happened to me. Several years ago, 1995 to be exact, we heard about a revival in Toronto, Canada, and I wanted to go. It was a good idea, but the church didn't have the money and I didn't have the money. I wanted to go. Mentally, I assented to the idea of going. But the question we have to ask is, did I really want it? And I remember praying one day and I was thinking a lot about this and I was praying and then suddenly from the depth of my being, I realized that God had done something in me and I really wanted to go. I absolutely desired to go. I said, God, I really want to go there. This is going beyond a good idea. This is the desire of my heart to go to Toronto. Well, you've never seen money appear so quickly. Someone put $30,000 into the church. That Sunday after church, the board had a quick meeting on the side of the stage and they decided to send me and Rosanna to Toronto. So the next thing, the tickets were booked and we're on our way. But it started when I really, really wanted to because Jesus said this, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. I had a moment of overflow from the desire of my heart. Amen. Now, the other time words come out of our heart, it's like a bag. And when we're under pressure, oof, it gets squeezed, out come words. So we've got to listen for those words coming out when we're under pressure. Sometimes that pressure is when someone puts you on the spot and asks you in an embarrassing situation about something you believe. Other times when a crisis arises or if some sort of disaster happens, you're right under pressure. Maybe it's when you hit your thumb with a hammer, jam your finger in the car door, what's in your heart will come out because it's squeezed and whatever's in there is going to emerge and that's what will come out of your mouth. Because remember, at times like that, your brain shuts down and you can't filter what you say. It just comes out. I remember one day we were parked out the front of church and I just locked the car and Rosanna was standing on the other side with a very funny look on her face. And she said, Dave, unlock the car. Unlock the car. I said, why? Just unlock the car. And when I unlocked it, I went around and I found out that her finger was jammed in the door, in the gap between the front door and the back door. But she didn't swear. She didn't scream. She just said, unlock the car. Because in her heart, it wasn't filled with swear words, with cursing, with blasphemy. It was just filled with wisdom. Amen. So we unlocked the car. She got a finger out. Thankfully, it wasn't broken and it recovered. Of course, we prayed for it. Amen. So what do you really want today? What do you desire? What do you crave after? What is the desire over which you are passionate and stirred to the center of your being? In other words, what gets you up in the morning? What motivates your life? What's more than a fleeting fantasy or a nice idea? What prayer is it that when answered will enable you to fulfill the purpose of your life? What fills your heart and is pressing to overthrow for your lips? Jesus said that you can have it if you say it, but he also said you can have it when you pray it. Amen? Because it's the same kind of concept of overflow. For example, the story was told by a preacher 
of a young man who went fishing with an older, wise friend. The old man had been a great success in life and the young man wanted to learn from him, so he went fishing hoping something would rub off. And they're out probably in a little boat out in the lake and they're fishing and it's all got to be quiet, you know, it's just a little boat, it's down in the water. And then the young man finally popped out his question and he said, how do you become a success in life? With that, the older gentleman suddenly reached over, grabbed him by a handful of hair on the back of his head, forced him over the side of the boat and held his head underwater. And he held it and held it. He saw the bubbles come out and he felt this man fighting against him and fighting against him. Just as he was losing strength, he lifted him up and the young man's going, oh, oh. and he was spitting out water and finally regained his composure. And he says, what'd you do that for? And the old wise man said, when you want success as much as you wanted that breath of air a few minutes ago, then you'll get it. And that's talking about the strength of your desire. What is it that you really desire? Is it the salvation of your loved ones, a stable family, children and grandchildren that grow up to serve God? What is it that you really want? Amen. Do you want great revival in the church? Maybe you want to go on world travel, world missions, to build a great business, have the career you always wanted, to reach new people with the gospel, to have your own family, your own house, your own car. What is it that you really want? And of course, you can have several of these. I always think of Esther in the Old Testament. Esther saved her generation. That's good. Amen. But that didn't stop her having a palace, a prince, princess clothing, pampering, and living in a great location. All of those things you can have in God, because the Bible says with God, nothing is impossible. Saving her generation didn't stop her from having the other things. According to your faith, be it unto you. There are promises that cover all of these things in the Bible. We've got to go for those promises. That's why we don't have much time to be out there frivolously enjoying the world's entertainment. When we've got so many important storage and promises in the Bible that we can meditate on and fulfill all the desires of our heart through God. Amen. There's no limits. Nothing holding you back from having it all. There's no either or all with God. He said, according to your faith, be it unto you. Go for it. I encourage you, just keep growing your faith all of your life. Keep developing it. Amen. Now, when you work out what you desire, and when it really is clear, you can do it as a written prayer, and I'll say something about that in coming messages. You can write it as a petition. And 1 John 5, 14 to 15, encourages us in this. I'm reading the King James Version. And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. Petition in English is a written or formal request made to someone with the authority to answer it, and it can be signed by one or many people. You know, we often have petitions that go into the government, for example, and they are generally signed by many people, but it's a written request. So with your desire, you can write it, down. And God told Habakkuk, write the vision, make it plain, so he who reads it can run with it. And I want to encourage you that if you write it down and you read it, you're the one who reads it and you can run with it. Because that vision has to be clear, it has to be specific, and it has to be completely the same all the time. Well, you can upgrade it, but you understand what I mean. It's not a vision to play for Essendon today and play for Carlton tomorrow. It's not a vision to travel overseas today and then tomorrow to be a vision to be on mission in the centre of Australia. It's not the vision to grow a great business today and be a businesswoman and then to be a great home builder, full-time parent tomorrow. We've got to get it clear what it is that we want. Stay with it. Put a stake in the ground and then say, this is why I'm here and you go for it. It's like 
A friend of mine got married and then he came to me afterwards and he said, oh, I'm not sure if I've married the right girl. I can't play the field anymore. And I said to him, you are married. Now you've just got to accept she is the right girl. Amen. So when you get that vision, I want to encourage you to stick to that vision. Don't vary from it because the devil will try everything he can to move you away from what you desire. He'll give a thousand reasons, a hundred excuses. He'll give you feelings and ideas and he'll threaten you and try to intimidate you. But Jesus said, whatsoever thing you desire when you pray believe you receive it and you will have it and if you don't doubt in your heart but believe that what you say is coming to pass you can have what you say whose report we you to believe? Are you going to believe what Jesus says? And if you consistently and unvaryingly without being double-minded hold to it or are you going to believe what the devil says and flip from one to the other and be like a butterfly flipping this way and that way and going by the wind? I want to encourage you today. Find out what it is that you desire. What's the desire of your heart? Then you go for it with everything you've got. Believe that you receive it. God will do things that you can't and you can move forward into it. Amen. Be confident. Sometimes we write it down and sometimes we just pray it out of the overflow of our heart. Even if it comes out by words in a language you know, words in a language you don't know, like speaking in tongues, or even if it comes out in groans. This is prayer that's important and prayer that Jesus says God will answer. For example, in John eleven thirty eight, 38, standing at the graveside of Lazarus, where he was entombed in the cave, Jesus therefore again groaning in himself. He was groaning in words that are unutterable. Amen. Romans 8, 23. Ourselves also, which have the first fruit of the Spirit, even we groan within ourselves. Amen. So we have at times to just pray the passion of our heart even when we can't articulate it, we pray it, we crave it, we long for it, we desire it. And this is the prayer that God will answer according to Mark eleven twenty four. So today, if you haven't yet given your life to Jesus, his desire is for you to become one of his children through being born into his family. Yes, I know it doesn't make sense. We were born into this world with the parents. But Jesus spoke about being born again, being born again spiritually, becoming a new creation on the inside, a new person. And when he is born, this new person is born into God's family and he is one of God's children from that second onward. To make this happen, Jesus gave up his life on the earth. He allowed the evil people to crucify him, but because he was perfectly sinless, they couldn't crucify him for what he had done wrong. And so he enabled himself to be crucified, punished, whipped, spending time in hell because of what I've done wrong and you've done wrong. He did it for us. Yes, it might be a big step to admit we've done things wrong, unloving, unkind, hurtful, selfish. But if we will admit it today, then we can see that Jesus paid all the consequences of what we've done wrong. And those consequences were severe. The Bible talks about the fire of judgment, the fire of hell, and the judgment seat of Christ, the judgment seat of God. We all have to be judged on what we've done in this life. And so if we don't accept Jesus' sacrifice, we have to face that judgment on our own merit. And you better be hoping you've done nothing wrong so you can get through but I'm assured by the word of God that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. The good news is that Jesus paid for you. And so if you put your trust in him, receive his new birth today, you can, then you become his child and the past is completely expunged, quashed, washed away and annihilated. It's gone. None of the things you've done up to this second will count in eternal judgment if you accept Jesus and his sacrifice today, receive his new birth and then begin to walk with him as Lord. This is available to you right now 
because of what Jesus has done by simply asking, praying, and repenting. To make this perfectly simple, I'm going to lead you in a prayer right now. And if you pray this prayer to God and say it sincerely with all your heart, believing you receive today, then this will be yours. Your name will be in the Lamb's Book of Life and you'll be a part of God's family, able to ask your Heavenly Father in the way I've been describing. Simply pray this prayer after me right now. Say, Jesus, now you say that, Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for me. I turn from my old life. Today, Lord Jesus, I acknowledge that you paid for my sin, that you died, that you went to hell, but that you rose again, proving it's forgiven. I receive you as my Saviour. I confess that you are now my Lord, and I will follow you from this day forward. I receive your new birth. I'm born again, and my name's in the Lamb's Book of Life, and I am God's very own child. Amen. Well, if you said that prayer and really meant it, and if you weren't sure, of course, you can always rewind a bit and say the prayer along with me. But if you really meant it today, then your name has been recorded as God's child. You've disappeared out of the devil's world system, and you're in God's kingdom, and you're safe. You're safe from eternal judgment as long as you keep confessing Jesus is Lord. Keep following him. To help with this, you read your Bible every day. You pray to God every day. And if you do something wrong, you go straight to God and ask him to forgive you. Because he said in his word, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from unrighteousness. Well, God bless you. Thank you so much for listening today. Let's remember to keep praying what we desire in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. See you in the next video.